What's going on guys, no guides here, welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to go over the controller settings. In my opinion, the most effective, efficient and the best controller settings to give you an advantage in the game which can help you become a better player and maybe even give you a win or so extra in weekend league. Um, I think this is actually more important than you think. This is especially post patch as well because since the intervention of FIFA 20 in September, a lot of things have changed and a lot of controls have changed because of that but I'm also going to show you some visual examples I'm going to show you what ball relative does how it differs from player relative why I use ball relative instead of player relative why I use manual jockeying what does it do um, just to actually show you what it does let's say this is just my opinion um, but uh, an actual use case for them and I'll give you the evidence of behind it as well I'm um, starting off with the FIFA trainer now leave this on hidden there's no reason to leave it on on unless you're new to the game um, then leave it on on but on, on online you can't see it anyway in foot champion etc etc so leave this on hidden Time shooting, I leave this on on, um, but if you don't time your shots, leave on off. I believe you can still time your free kicks and your penalties if it's on off, but the reason why you may want it on is you actually want to time your shots in game, um, or for example, let's say for example, you want to time a header, but I'll be honest, let's leave this on off. I leave it on on because when I play with a 30k cheap team or I play with a 20k team, I need this to be on on to guarantee the goal, but sometimes I like to shoot with my CDM and time my shots. Just leave this on off if you don't know how to time your shots because if you spam the shoot button, you can hit a red time shot and that could be a difference between you winning and losing the game. So please, unless you really know how to use time shooting, leave this on off. Um, second defender switch icon. Now, this is more important than you think. And this is why I said post patch comes in. I used to leave this on off because it was merely a distraction. I leave one on now. There's two use cases now. The first use case, in case you didn't know, um, the second defender icon is basically this burgundy kind of faded away icon. So you have the normal red one, which shows the player you're selected. And the second defender switch icon is this burgundy kind of faded away icon with kind of like a gold thing around it. But the benefit, the benefit of this is that is that you can see, number one, which player you can switch to guarantee, which can help your right stick and player switching. And two, you can see which player is pressing with. Let's start with the pressing now. If you hold the R1 or the RB button, which is the second defender press button or second defender contain, um, you can actually see which player is pressing. So normally the player, or 99% of the time, the player with the second defender icon above his head will be the player that's pressing. For example, down the wing here, you can see the player with the second defender icon when I'm holding R1, that player is pressing. So that way you can just see the movement of the player. Um, but since that has been patched now, second defender container, they don't really run anymore. They just kind of just jockey and kind of walk towards your opponent. The use case is basically gone. Um, but the, other, the one benefit you still want this on on is sometimes you want to switch to a player. Now, in terms of right stick switching, we know, I know it doesn't always work. Now, in my opinion, when you have this on off um, sec um, second defender switch icon, well, you saw you increase the probability of error because sometimes you want to switch to your center back. You don't always need to use a right stick switch. The good thing with the second defender switch icon is that icon is going to be your, above your your actual player you want to switch to. So let's say for example here, I want to switch to PK. As you can see, the second defender switch icon is above his head. So I can just press L1 and I'll switch to that player guaranteed 1000%. However, if for example, I wanted to switch to PK, if I flick my right analog stick to switch, to switch to PK, there is a chance I could switch to, for example, my left back or my other center back. So this way is almost like a guarantee that you're going to switch to that player but the second defender switch icon is selected. So in case you didn't know, that's one of the benefits of leaving second defender switch icon on. Um, I recommend to every single person um, to use this, in my opinion, unless it really serves as a distraction. Pass block assistance, um, I would say leave this one on. There's no reason to leave on off. I did some extensive testing when the game came out. Um, I don't know anyone that uses on off. You Basically, what this means is if your CDM is cutting the passing lanes, if the ball is near him, if you leave this one on, he'll make the interception. There's no reason to have this off. The only reason you may want this on off is if you want to occupy a space as opposed to tackling. But unless you're below, if you're below elite three or if you're below elite two, just leave this. I'll be honest on on. Don't leave this on off. Just, just trust me. Leave it on on. Auto switching. Now every single person that I, even with people that I coach, I always recommend you use air balls and loose balls. By the way, if you do want one of one v one coaching, I do offer it. Um, the link will be in the description for this. This will give you the full information. Um, but you can read more about that anyway. Link will be in the description for that. But anyway, back to auto switching. Yeah, so I recommend all my coaching, uh, everyone that I coach, should I say, on air balls. I used to use manual, um, but the problem is sometimes a delay. There's an element of like, if you if the cross is being made, if you don't switch on the right time, you might the player might deselect and you might concede a goal. So just keep it safe, use air balls. Do not use auto because auto means that the game will switch for you. So let's say for example, you want to right stick switch to your CDM and run around with your CDM. The game would just might just switch to your center back randomly. So you want full control and air balls, just in case you didn't know, air balls, in terms of when the ball's in the air, you'll only switch at air balls when the ball is eight feet or higher. Remember eight feet or higher. That's really, really important. You remember that. Um, 
but anyway leave us on air balls um don't leave us on manual um auto switch move assistance now this is one that is debatable uh, everyone will say different things i'll just say leave us on low now i leave it between none and low and i'll explain to you why um the best way i can explain this to you is um Let's say you play a through ball onto your striker, um, and your and from your cam to your striker, your striker is running onto that through ball. Now the good thing is when you switch to that player, basically AI will control your player for one second. Low is 0.5, and none is no control. And the, basically what that means is, um, let's say there's a delay. Sometimes you can argue the player will keep running in that direction that's already that's already predefined. Really which will give you time to orient your player um, when you're trying to switch to that player so that way you don't run in the opposite direction just for a short period of time it's like one second 0 0.5 and none um on my opinion leave this on low i used to leave this on none but because of delay sometimes if you switch let's say the cam plays a through ball onto the striker again if i don't move at the right time or let's say my input is registered incorrectly because of the pass direction as opposed to the movement or kind of run at a different angle so just leave this on low just trust me leave this on low I need to make a full video explaining how this works in detail, but just trust me, just leave this on low. Don't leave this on high, just leave it on low. Um, that way you have some kind of assistance with AI, but not too much. Um, now, jockeying, manual assistance. Now, this is the question I get asked a lot. Now, in, in all honesty, um, I would say, unless you're above Elite 3, use assisted. The reason why is manual, okay, the best way I can explain this to you is, manual means you have complete free flow of your assistant. So if you do the run in jockey, wherever you run, that's where you're going to run. End of story. With assisted, there is basically deacceleration when you're near your opponent. So what this means, let's say, for example, you're inside your box, you're defending. And let's say, for example, your, stri your opponent's striker's got the ball. Let's say you're running jockeying. Now, let's say, for example, sometimes you might, for example, guess the wrong way. What the game will assist you is there will basically deacceleration with your movement. So that way you don't run past your player. So basically, this is giving you the element of assistance. So let's say, for example, you're running jockeying. If you're not that good at the game or not that proficient in running jockeying, the game will help you kind of stick to the play. That way, if your opponent is dribbling, jockey, let's say you run too quickly with left analog stick or you run past your opponent, the game will deaccelerate you and will kind of push you a bit towards your opponent. So this, this is beneficial. Leave this on assisted. I leave this on manual for the reason, and this is only for Elite 3 plus players, leave this on manual. You may want full control in midfield. Let's say, for example, you have the ball with your CDM. Sometimes with your CDM, you may want to occupy a space as opposed to cut the passing lanes or act as a deterrent. So let's say, for example, your opponent has the ball with his cam. He wants to pass the ball to both his strikers. You might want to run between those two strikers with your with the manual jockey, but you don't want, for example, the game to, to think, oh, he's going next to the cam. Let me deaccelerate. Because the game will basically register deacceleration as you're kind of running past the player. But sometimes you might want to run past the player deliberately so you can bait the pass into the player, which has a lesser impact or has that lesser danger. This is complicated, and it's only listen to this part if you're above Elite 3. Basically, leave this on assisted unless you're above Elite 3. If, you, if, you, if you're above Elite 3, do this on manual, but just do bear in mind you won't get that deacceleration. Uh, but this is really good for cutting the passing lanes manually. And if, for example, you're trying to bait a pass, like let's say you overcommit on one side and you want to bait uh, your opponent to go to the less dangerous pass, or you want to pass, or you want your opponent to pass to another direction. Um, but yeah, that is um, the main thing with that. Again, Elite 3 and above manual. Below Elite 3, um, I would say assisted. Right stick switching. Now, FIFA analyst made a video on this. If you've not checked them out, make sure you do. Um, but he made a video on this and he says, I use ball relative. People DM me on Twitter saying, is this true? Yes. Um, in my opinion, I know 99.99% of all players use player relative and including probably some of the pro players. Ball relative for me is the most efficient and I'll give you the reasons why. I would just say, just if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Um, I got a defending tutorial coming out soon. I'll kind of go through this in detail. Um, make sure you turn notifications on for that to get a video regarding that. But basically, there's two. There's ball relative and there's player relative. Now, to be honest, player relative is the default. Um, but I think ball relative is a superior one. I know I'm in the minority here, but I generally think it's the best one. Um, I'll try to explain to you why. Especially when you're using a co-op camera angle, for example, it's easy to see and it's more consistent to use ball relative. I'll explain to you why. Now, generally by default, let's say, for example, your opponent's attacking you and you're controlling your center back, right? If you want to switch to your left back, you have to flick the right analog stick up towards that player. So it depends on where the player is. So wherever you're, whichever player you're selecting, if you want to select that second player, it depends on which initial player you're selecting first is and then from wherever wherever he is, you have to aim either up to go to your, for example, your left back in this instance. Now with ball relative, it's a bit different. It gives you a bit more control and I think a bit more versatility. It acts as the ball as the center point. So wherever the ball is on the pitch, 
that's where the reference points will be. So let's say, for example, on this clip, here I'm controlling my center back, but I actually want to change to my left back. Now, instead of pressing the right analog stick up as I would have done in play relative, I actually aim it to the top left. You see here, the reason why is because the ball is in the middle of the pitch and I want to switch to my left back. And that's why it's consistent because the, the reference point, it never changes, it stays consistent. It will take you some time to get used to this. It will take you some time, but once you get used to it, you're going to be laughing. I'll be honest, I can't go back now. It's just, I'll be honest, I think 30% better player switching, I think, increased. I'll put a number on, a figure on that. 30% around about with ball relative because the reference point, it never changes. With player relative, the reference point's always changing. You're adding that inconsistency, especially in delay. Whereas ball relative, the player, the reference point is always where the football is. So wherever the football is, you want to change to your striker, you flick to the right hand side from shooting from left to right. If you want to change your left back, you flick to the top left. And that way also, you're going to get a muscle memory. So whenever the ball is in a certain area, the, let's say the ball is, for example, in the center half, you know if you flick the right along stick to the top left, you know it's always going to go to the left back no matter what. So that's why it adds element of being consistent. Everything here, um, I'll be honest, leave this all unassisted. Um, there is no reason to leave this on semi or manual. Um, I used to leave. I used to have four manual controls prior to FIFA 13. I've changed now. There's no point using some manual. Um, now cross assistance. Um, some people use this on assisted. Use this on semi. This way you can control the power. So basically, the more power you apply, the further the ball will go to the back post. Or obviously, the least amount of power you apply, it will go basically near post. So this gives you control. Whereas assisted, kind of just the ball just goes anywhere to any player in a box or a semi. You can basically control whether the ball goes near post or back post, depending on how much power you apply. Um, so obviously I leave this on a semi, especially if you cross the ball. Lob assistance, people leave this on manual. Um, I used to leave this on manual, um, but I, because of, I don't know, lob assistance doesn't really work that um, This just doesn't work lob passes that well this year, so I leave it on assisted. Uh, because I just think with delay, I just don't want to take a risk anymore with, you know, switching the ball and, you know, the game messing it up or something. Save assistance, leaves on assisted. Um, analog sprint, now, people don't know what this is. The best example that I explain to everyone, especially people that are coach, is... Basically, when you have it on, it's like a gas pedal. Your run button is like a gas pedal. So if you touch the gas pedal or the acceleration pedal for us, because we're obviously in EU, but I know there's some America's watching, but let's just say you touch the gas pedal a little bit or the acceleration pedal. If you touch it a little bit, you're only running at 20% of the speed. Just like in the car, you'll only be running or going at 20 miles per hour. The reason why you want this on off is because you want your player to always go from zero to 100. If you don't want to, for example, because you leave this on on, what's going to happen is if you touch the right, let's say, for example, you switch to your striker and then you start running. There is actually a second by the time you basically touch the right analog stick until you've gone to like the dead zone, the fourth throttle. So you want this on off. So that way, when your player your player is running, he's always going from zero to 100. So there's no zero, 20, 30, 40, 50 to 100. It's always zero to 100. That way you're running at max speed. Every So as soon as you press the run button, you're running at max speed. The only reason why you want this on on, I know one person, he's probably the best dribble I know in my life, but he's, I know one person who leaves on on. The reason why he leaves on on, and I asked him the, the full reason why, and he goes, when he's dribbling, he likes to dribble with the analog sprint with like 20% speed, and like sometimes he likes to use a full speed when someone comes nearby. So just leave us on off, just leave it on off. You want to be running at full speed all the time. Technical defending, you have to do this on on, um, obviously, because that is uh, the, the, you know, that's the, all the online gameplay is all on tactical defending. Um, even Scobell's tactical defending now, so leave this on tactical defending. Pass receiver lock, leave this on late. Basically, what this means is if it's on late, the best way I can explain this to you, if you make a pass, now if the animation kicks in, if it's on late, if you, for example, want to pass to your center back, but then you think, oh no, my opponent is marking my center back, you can switch to another player to pass to last second. As long as the ball is not being kicked, you can switch to whichever player you want. So let's say you, want, you aim one way, and let's say, for example, you see your teammates marking that passing lane, you can switch the, the passing the pass option. This is on early, it locks in early. So that means as soon as you press the pass button, that's it. You can't change it. As soon as the animation kicks in to make the pass, if your opponent is, for example, man marking um, a specific player and you pass to him, you can't cancel it. That's it, it's locked on. The pass is going to go there no matter whether you like it or not. The only way you can stop it is if you, do, for example, do a fake shot. That's it. So you're in trouble. So you want to leave this on late. There's no, the only reason why, now this is next level, but I used to leave this on early and I used to leave this on none. So I used to play, if, if for example, I want to play my ball, the ball from my cam to my striker, I used to leave this on, on early. So that way um, it locks on the pass early. So as soon as I make the pass, it locks on to the, to, for example, my, to my 
striker in this case, an example. And then with my striker, because I have um, basically uh, the move assistance on none, I could basically move quicker than my opponent. This is something very, very like high, high level, but because of delay, it doesn't work. In kickoff, it works, um, but in normal gameplay um, online, it doesn't work. So just leave this on late. Um, I wouldn't, I couldn't, I can't see a reason to wipe this on early. You just want this to be on late. The only thing I can have, I would say, if you struggle with first time fake shots and um, you want to lock in a bit earlier, you can put this on early, but just leave this on late. And that is pretty much it. Well, 15 minutes. That's the problem when you go in with a video on in depth and in detail, I suppose, 15 minutes long. But anyway, controller settings, probably thinking, what on earth is this? This is ISS Pro Evolution 2 controls. It's, it's out of habit. Um, don't use these controls, but in case you're wondering, these are the controls I use. So when you're watching my streams, it should be remapped to classic, um, but these are the controls that I use just in case you're wondering, um, but just use whatever controls are easy for you. Don't change anything at all. Um, just as a quick reference though, I like the shoot button being next to the X because that's where your, your right analog stick and your shoot button is close by. So let's say for example, your thumb is on a right analog stick. It's quicker to move it to the shoot button being on square as opposed to being circles a further distance to travel. Therefore you're adding that element of risking the, sh the shot being missed. And obviously you're de decreasing the time of the reaction. That's just um, some more nil guide stats for you. And then the second thing why I like um, the finet, uh, well, the only, the only benefit, the downside of this is for example, if you have, for example, as I said, um, analog sprint on on, I can't use analog sprint because um, you need analog sprint to be on the trigger because that's the one that goes on. That's the one that acts as like a, a gas pedal acceleration pedal. So you have full control because my sprints on R1 is always going to be 100%, but I don't care. I need that anyway. Um, the other benefit, should I say, is the teammate contain buttons on square. Um, naturally speaking, when you're moving, uh, when you're tackling or let's say you're switching players with the right analog stick again, you want the teammate press, the square button is close by to the right analog stick, so it's easier to change. And also naturally, think about your hands as well. Um, your thumb is going to be, on, your, your tip of your thumb is going to be on a square button and your base is going to be on X anyway. So it's easy just to make a tackle, in my opinion, that way as, as opposed to the tackle being on circle because then the right analog stick and then where your thumb is going to be and a circle button is quite far away. So this is all just precise, precise movements. Uh, this is just statistical increases um, in your gameplay to improve your reactions. And that's the reason why I still have this control. This is why I just don't change back again. Um, and then also um, you, the sprint buttons on R1. And then that way, because that way I can force myself to go to the uh, to the finesse button using R2 as well. Um, and that's the reason I don't use contain. Contain's a waste of time. Don't even use contain. And that is pretty much my controls. Um, hope you enjoy this video. Um, as I said, now we are now almost at 20 minutes now. Um, it's a long video, but if you are watching now, please write down in the comment section below. What do you struggle with the most in defending? I'll have a defend tutorial hopefully out by this week. So make sure you're subscribed to that if you're not already. Don't forget as well, we're going to stream on twitch.tv forward slash nilguide so you can see these actions, all these movements and actions. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy, boys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.